Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water, as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features Academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders, as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups, who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin Yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world, that according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features, which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge, used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties. Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly highly compelling. False doors are undoubtedly one of the most perplexing mysteries of the ancient world. Found all over the globe, legends regarding these enigmatic doorways, seemingly leading nowhere, actually once having been active portals of unknown origins, have permeated the many native cultures still found at many of these ancient anomalies. 
The toppled obelisk of Axum, for example, is not only one of the largest megaliths found on Earth, weighing many thousands of tons, once cut, transported, and subsequently erected within an obelisk field in Ethiopia, is drenched in false doorways. Found in peculiar locations within Peru's mountain ranges, one in particular found within a unique location within a rock face containing a rare element now used to increase radio frequencies. Yet the most intriguing and well-known of these doorways is the Gateway to the Gods, also known as the Midas Monument. Once perfectly carved into one face of a slim outcrop within this ancient site, literally translated as inscribed rock within the Eskashahir province in Turkey. Predictably, any circumstantial evidence that would suggest a date of creation within new or known world history have taken place by the academics tasked with dating the monument and the surrounding relics. The crude inscriptions, which we feel, due to the difference in quality and ability of their creators, we believe dated at a more primitive time, have been used to age the monument to no earlier than the 6th century BC. This inscription, translated as, Attis has dedicated this monument to Midas, Lavactus, and Vanax, being used to date the entire site. Quote, the name Attis, a variant of Attis, is a prominent name in Phrygia, associated with royalty. The fact that the dedication is made to Midas may indicate that he had received posthumous ruler cult. Various indications place the date of the monument's construction in the early to mid-7th century BC. The inscription probably indicates that the monument was erected after the death of Midas in the early 7th century BC. Another inscription on the right side of the monument includes the letter Yod, which was added to the Phrygian alphabet in the mid-6th century BC. End quote. No consideration has apparently been given to the possibility that, like many other as yet unexplained ruins we have shared, may have simply been re-inhabited and subsequently claimed as this people's work, giving a false perception of abilities and power. We find this curious. Who built the Midas monument? Could these false doors have actually once been portals to another place? We find such hypothesis, and indeed the monument itself, highly compelling. We recently covered the enigmatic megalith known as the White Rock of Vilcambaba within Peru, showing how this rock was in fact abandoned, abandoned midway through being harvested of blocks to be used in the nearby polygonal masonry, with many other sites, many still strewn with blocks cut with a natural appearing face, but a right-angled interlocking body. Yet upon the white rock still remained other mysterious patterns, such as that of the 90-degree steps cut into the stone. We have identified this kind of stone cutting previously, such as at Machu Picchu, clearly used to help construct the polygonal walls themselves, but also at other, until now unexplained, unfinished stones many found throughout Peru. Naupa Iglesia, for example, found just outside the astonishing ancient ruins of Olente Tambo, a mysterious megalith that many, including us, previously presumed was possibly some elaborate deliberate carving, a throne, or possibly, like the false door, meters away, an ancient portal of some form. However, when one approaches said rock with the same eye as that of the white rock, one quickly finds matching stonework finished and installed as that of the water fountain found within Olente Tambo itself, thus further supporting our hypothesis of these types of stone cuts and indeed step patterning found upon them is indicative of unfinished, abruptly abandoned stonework, many left unliberated or strewn among their ancient quarries. As with the many other discoveries made, once one begins to perceive unexplained artifacts of this nature in the correct way, they suddenly make sense, and the supportive evidence simply flows from the hidden into plain sight. How this, or possibly another clearly advanced yet once Stone Age civilization, made the cut marks into the solid pink Aswan granite found upon the unfinished obelisk among many other megalithic blocks found within the Aswan quarry within Egypt, however, is yet another mystery yet to be unraveled. 
but by identifying and distinguishing between what were enormous megalithic block quarries and what were those of the baffling polygonal blocks is, we believe, the correct path to take if one wishes to unravel the mystery of just how this lost civilization operated, what they were constructing, and hopefully explain who they were and indeed where we came from. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.